So, we know a lot more information now about Battlefield 1, and that's great, but there are some aspects that have changed moving from Battlefield 4, and that's our last major entry into the franchise, and not least of all of those is sniping, and that's a role that has changed a lot. And because I really like to play as a sniper, and I will do so in Battlefield 1, it's one of my favourite infantry roles to really get into, I wanted to focus on that today and really give you guys a bit of a lowdown as to what you can expect in this new game, and how some of it has changed from previous titles. So first off, I wanted to show you guys the menus, and while that might sound a little bit boring, there is a lot of information that can be shown off here. So first of all, thank you to Stode for letting me steal his footage here of the menu. Stupid Westy didn't record any whilst he was at the capture event. His Twitch channel is in the description. He is an awesome sniper, so you should definitely go across and follow him. Maybe check out some of his streams. I know he streams every day and he's a really nice guy. But let's look at the right hand side here, that magical table full of things. Here you can see visually the statistics of your rifle with data for the damage, the accuracy, the hip fire and control. Whatever that means, I'm sure there are lots of different stats that go into those different bars. Alongside that, you've got an overview of the ammunition that you'll start with, the fire mode, and the rate of fire, and finally, the bit that I really want to talk about, the lovely chart. Now this chart shows the damage over distance, which is the solid red line, and the bullet drop which is the dotted red line. Now, the damage over distance is interesting to me. We can see Battlefield 1's new critical hit mechanic coming into play. You can basically call that the sweet spot. You'll notice that that line takes a sharp upturn around a third of the way along and then goes down again. At those distances where the bar is higher, you'll do more damage with your weapon, and outside of those, you'll only do the standard damage value. This puts more emphasis on the choice of your rifle, because some may have a critical hit or a sweet spot that hits out at long range, and some might have it close in for maximum close quarters impact. It's a new mechanic to get used to, and one that will make you switch out weapons depending on the map or the situation. And then under that damage line, we have the bullet drop. This is gravity acting on the bullet as it flies. Now I'm sure if you've been part of the Battlefield series for a while, you will know all about bullet drop, but if you're new to Battlefield, yes, bullets do have bullet drop. Now here in Battlefield 1, the value, as you can see from the graph, changes as the bullet moves through the air. And it seems to be that gravity has more of an effect on the bullet the longer it moves, but that's not the case. Here as well as bullet drop, you're now dealing with changing bullet velocity the further the bullet goes, and that's to mimic something that would happen in real life. When you fire a bullet out of a sniper rifle, it initially will fire at the fastest velocity that it possibly can, and the further that it travels, gravity will start acting upon it, and you have wind resistance as well, so the bullet will start to slow down, and that means it will get closer and closer to the ground, and eventually it will hit the ground. That's being mimicked here in Battlefield 1, so the further the bullet goes, the faster it's going to drop, because the slower the bullet will travel. Now, that's a lot of information to take in, and you might be wondering whether sniping feels drastically different in Battlefield 1 from what you might have experienced in the past. I'm happy to report that that's not the case, there are some good changes, but for me, it feels like an amalgamation of Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3 sniping, which I would argue is probably some of the best sniping experiences that you can get in the first person genre. So if you like those games, if you like the way the fast action of Battlefield 3 mixed with the really satisfying feeling of Bad Company 2, then you're going to be right at home here in Battlefield 1. Next, new reloading mechanics to think about. When reloading sniper rifles in Battlefield 4, it's always been known that reloading before the weapon magazine is completely empty, that will yield you a faster reload time. Not here in Battlefield 1. 
As the rifles use mechanisms that are very different to the modern ones that you're used to seeing in Battlefield 4, it's actually more beneficial to wait until a clip is empty and reload a new full one into the rifle. Reloading before a clip is empty plays an animation of loading each bullet back into the rifle directly until the clip is full again. That's something you really need to look out for and it might catch you out if you're not paying attention. Next, what rifles are you going to be playing with? Well, in the closed alpha, there are three different rifles. You've got the Russian 1895, and that's actually a lever action repeating firearm, very different from the other two. You've got the Gewehr 98, a legendary sniper rifle, I'm sure you've all heard of it, and the Mark III Lee Enfield. The Gewehr 98 is the long range option, and that offers a long range sweet spot the least amount of bullet drop and access to two different scopes. A longer range, higher magnification and a lower magnification scope. The Russian 1895 is probably a middle ground where you can run it without a scope at all. So there's your bolt action rifle without a scope. Plenty of people complaining that you couldn't do that. You can do it. You just have to pick the right version of it. Removing the scope actually improves the rate of fire quite a bit may be good for those close quarters engagements and it gives you a mid-range sweet spot for extra damage. And finally, the Mark III Lee Enfield, this is your close range rifle, offering use of a close range optic or iron sights, very good iron sights I might add, and it comes with 10 rounds in a clip, meaning you're not going to be reloading as often, plus its sweet spot is closest to the point of firing, again emphasizing that short range roll. Of course, the release version of Battlefield 1 is likely to have more sniper rifles than the closed alpha. And if we switch back to the menu here, you can see there are plenty of extra slots for sniper rifles to fill. Now, if each model of sniper rifle has two different variants, then you could look at that list and say there might be five more sniper rifles coming to Battlefield 1, but that's unconfirmed right now. We don't 100% know. There could be more variants of these three rifles. We just don't know yet. But it'll be interesting to see when we do get to learn more what different rifles they will have on offer for us to play with. And something quickly to add, this is really important, Scout players will have access to anti-material rounds as well, and these will come in the form of a gadget slot. If you equip it, your rifle switches from standard rounds to a single shot anti-material round. You need to load a new one into the rifle after every single shot. Now in my testing, they were much more beneficial against light vehicles, so things like planes, cars, bikes, etc but still not a great help when it comes to those heavy tanks or land ships as they're called. It's a feature we saw in Hardline, but with more of a focus on them being effective against vehicles. So that's sniping covered in the closed alpha version of Battlefield 1. We have to remember this is all a work in progress and it's all subject to change. So everything you see here in this video is only really appropriate for the next couple of weeks because, well, Things are always changing when it comes to development of video games. I'm sure we'll see more weapons, you saw the screenshot, plenty of extra space in there, and we'll find out more about the scout role as more information is released. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments, but until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.